name is Ben Gleeson. I'm the head of airshow operations here at Farmer International. I've been in post now for 10 months. Um, and my responsibility here is to, to ensure the, uh, the safe delivery of all of the infrastructure, all of the exhibition um, and the trade sites here, the exhibition halls, the chalets and all the outdoor exhibit spaces. So when I came into the, to the event um, with a two year planning cycle in, into the air show, um, a lot of the, uh, the infrastructure and the, the agreements and the, the planning was already in place. It was just then the fine tuning of those elements, obviously for the delivery that, that we've had this year that I was working through with the, the current head of air show operations who's retiring at the end of the month. Who is Andy Coulson. For me it's putting a fresh set of eyes on every element of the, and every component here of the air show um, to drive us with the, the traditional innovative and pioneering spirit a farmer is known for so that we can drive this air show forward to be one of the, the best in the world. There are various elements of, of networks, drainage, plumbing, other things that are put in for the air show that we've put in as permanent installations across the site. So uh, we work very closely with TAG who, who own the, the airfield as a whole and our leased areas of the site we then make investment in so that obviously it will support the air show as it moves forward and we're future proofing the site. Technology is obviously a key thing that we are looking at how we can improve efficiency across everything. We use a number of different systems at the moment. So we use uh, WeTrack, which was developed for the Olympics. We use that for our project planning internally. Um, we also use WeTrack as an instant management system here on site. So we have all of the local um, authorities and agencies in our show, show control centre um, using the WeTrack instant management tools. Um, and that again, is a really, really key thing for us in, in ensuring the communication flows and everything is logged as it needs to be on, on an event of this scale. Combined with that, we use other, other technologies just like Smartsheet to make things more efficient with communication with our suppliers um, and also for them to feed information to us as well as us to, to feed back to them. Um, and then um, on top of all that for the relationship with our, a lot of our contractors and the, uh, the exhibitors is a system um, called ENET from D2I Systems and that is the, the equivalent of uh, a portal of exhibitor manual, badges and passes, ordering systems, all, all in one portal so that makes things as easy as we possibly can for them. And whilst that is a number of different systems, we are now looking at how we can integrate those and join those up and actually make those platforms talk to each other going forward for the sharing of that information and, and increase the efficiency for all and, and ultimately that customer journey. The big new innovation that we're using this, this year is um, a technology on the all, the all the security entrances called high footfall screening, which enables people to get into the event far, far quicker than they ever have done before. I work with the CPNI um, and it's been trialled at various locations throughout London, but we're the first event to use it on the scale that we have here. It's, it's a security system system that is designed to still detect um, large um, threat items that are coming into the site. However, um, at the same time, it has a far higher throughput than your traditional airport style search screening and x-ray detection. By doing that, we've increased the, the flow through all of the gates by at least fivefold from what it was in previous years and got to the point where we actually don't have any static queues entering the show this year. We've got two companies operating the search equipment for us this year. One is RapiScan and the other one is Three Vision. So both of them are high footfall screening solutions. The, the RapiScan solution looks like your traditional security arch, but the software behind it has been reprogrammed and redeployed just to, te to detect um, larger metallic objects, so smaller objects aren't detected, and it's been, it's been worked through and trialled at various locations. Um, and combined with that, with the search dogs and security profiling, all of the risk factors are still catered for. Um, and then the through vision solution is another screening, a, a full body screening solution that obviously will detect any metallics on individuals that walk through. For the public days, we're operating with the same systems. Um, we obviously have a, a different visitor profile for those days, so we, we do have a, a greater and larger security team on, on, on those areas with search dogs and more profiling going on. The team here at Farnborough um, has significantly changed from how it, how it was structured two years ago. Two years ago there was a permanent operational team here that ran the, the air show and other, other events here at Farnborough of six people. In the past two years that team has now increased to 16 people um, and the structure of that is a, there's a new operations director, Neil Thuma, in place and underneath him there are three heads of. Um, one is myself, so I'm head of airshow operations just to look after um, the air shows that we do. So that is both here in Farnborough and in Bahrain as well. Um, and then there are as a head of event management for all of our guest events that are now visiting our, our wonderful new Hall 1 facility and also Hall 5. Um, and then we have a, a head of facilities to keep all of this running on a 365 basis. Working with DeBoer is fantastic. I've worked with them for many years, uh, both at Spearhead Exhibitions, then Reed Exhibitions, and now here for Farnborough. Their whole team here on site have, have been an absolute pleasure to work with in terms of delivering this. The complexity of what they do for us here and the sheer range of buildings here is, is like no other in the UK, and they, they really do do a truly great job for us. My name's Daniel Perry. I'm a project manager for Lost Burger DeBoer. Uh, we've been on Farnborough Air Show now for two over two decades, and hopefully that's going to continue. So at this year's air show, we've got just over 100,000 square meters of tentage uh, so if you was to lay that all out it would be over a kilometer in length 
which shows you, you know, the reason why we're here for such a long period of time. It's a very big build for us. Uh, we've got uh, 24 full-time members of staff on site at all times. And uh, since we've been here, uh, we've, we've registered about 100, 120 personnel to come down, help us with carpentry work, scaffolding, and putting up the structures and the substructures. In terms of what we actually bring on site, we have about 175 trucks that will arrive on site. And it's about 3,150 tonnes of material that we're bringing onto site. And then post-show, we have to take it all down and exactly the same again to take it off site. We are an international company and we have materials all around the world, obviously in Europe, uh, in North America, in China. Um, most of the materials for this build has actually come from Europe. So we have our logistics uh, is based in Brie in Belgium. And we have a large warehouse also in Alkmaar in the Netherlands, as well as some stock that we hold in our Brackley warehouse in Northamptonshire. Um, and that material is slowly filtered through, some coming from other events and others coming directly from our uh, warehouses around Europe. So in terms of what we've been building on site this year, uh, we've obviously got Hall 2, which is a, a large structure. We've got Hall 3 and Hall 4. They're all made from Lost Burger de Boer materials. Um, moving on from there, we have the rows. So we have B row, C row, and D row again, mostly Lost Burger de Boer materials. We also have uh, J and K row and P row, which is just behind us, just here. And also we have some uh, other orders, as you can see, the Leonardo structure, which is just behind us, which is our our double deck uh, Emperor structure. So we have lots of different materials on site. It's contracted through Farmer, so we're the official suppliers on site here, and we've been the official suppliers on site for over two decades. Um, so Leonardo uh, working with Farnborough and ourselves, they gave us a brief of what they would like to achieve and we've come up with what you can see behind us which is the beautiful Emperor structure. So the materials for this structure that you can see behind me uh, came over from our warehouse in Alkmaar. Uh, we, have, uh, we have several specialist crews in the UK that are capable of building this structure but because of the time frame we only had uh, just over two weeks to build this structure. We also had some specialists sent over from Holland uh, to help us get this done. So we had a we had a 12-man specialist crew, and then we had a, a also so a, about eight agency bodies just here to help us out to, to push the build through. So obviously we're one of the uh, one of the first contractors to come on site, and we're one of the last to leave site. Um, we started at the end of February the 26th, and like I said, we'll be here all the way through until uh, late August. So that does bring up a lot of challenges in terms of the weather conditions. So since we've been here we have had everything we've had snow we've had rain hail we've had uh, storm hector uh, and then we've obviously had the blistering heat that we've been having this summer as well so it's uh, a lot of conditions been thrown at us but the guys have done a, a, a sensational job this year everyone's worked really hard pulled together and uh, we're, we're really happy with the, what we've achieved this year one of the challenges we obviously have here at the air show is the air show is obviously made up of two separate shows in a way you've got the trade show and then you've got the public air show and we're responsible for building the majority of the structures on both of those grounds so the public air show um, we have to build that during the trade show so right now as i'm speaking my guys are over in the public area and we're building uh, approximately 60 structures uh, which will be ready for the public show which starts on the saturday now obviously when the public show opens as well it's also important for security reasons that all of the halls there's no access for the public so the night before the public show, we also have to make our way to the halls and just make sure that all of the entrances and exits are all secured so no one can get in and out uh, and everyone's ready for an exciting public show. So the reason for us uh, building the public show at this stage during the trade show is because it's very important to Farnborough that we keep the runway active as long as possible. So what we need to do is make sure that we are not disrupting the normal uh, activities that happen here at Farnborough. So when the trade show is on, the runway is shortened and closed off so that gives us the opportunity to build the public show and that way Farnborough can keep operating as the airport that it needs to you know we've been here for 20 years now so we've dotted the i's we've crossed the t's we know what we're doing and that just gives us enough time to get the show ready for the uh, the public days this time around gs are doing all of the stand fitting for us within the halls that's all of the shell scheme builds and, and some of the other feature areas that we have it's also the carpets the furniture here across the air show and uh, combined with that blitz uh, are then the av supplies for us hi i'm mark eddie i'm the chief commercial officer uh, for GES. Um, I'm here at Farnborough uh, in 2018 and we've been enjoying a really proud heritage with this particular show for the last 40 odd years. Uh, particularly as General Corps contractor, I would say in the last 20 plus years we've been delivering all the shell scheme, carpeting and all the core services to the organiser and then allied to this 
split to AV is part of a GS service. That's an AV and technical production company. And we're now in the new hall that we're standing on top of here, which is uh, this splendid facility that's now taking the Farnborough Air Show onto the next level. Farnborough this year, we're delivering uh, a variety of projects uh, from exhibit pavilions, chalets, uh, corporate exhibition stands and uh, we're delivering 17 specific chalets all along the chalet run all the way from uh, chalets from 120 square meters all the way through to 1200 square meters. A big part of GS success is clearly the people behind it. Um, you know we've been on site starting our preparation for this show as early as 10 weeks out delivering one of the key engine exhibits into one of the chalets. One of the big things is our unparalleled logistical footprint on at Farnborough here all the way from the back of Hall 3 for delivering all the core services service centre through to the significant footprint that we have elsewhere that means that we can get to any part of this particular show and service our clients. We cover 44 countries uh, consistently each year uh, and that requires our, t our teams to be deployed all over the world. Um, I think that takes a special type of staff commitment uh, and, uh, and our ability as a, as a company to be able to tool up. We do have strategic offices specifically in all of those um, time zones so that clients can know that they can dial into us um, and know that they're going to get that quality service that's consistent, that keeps their brand alive in the way that they would want it. The key um, part that we work with here on site is um, DB Pixel House um, and DB will install all of the event networks for us across the whole site and we work very closely with them and we're looking at what technologies we can introduce for, for the 2020 event again to just improve efficiency and connectivity for, for everybody across the site and how we can work with them. So I'm David Bully, I'm CEO of DB Pixel House, recently rebranded from DB Systems. The main thing we do here, the big thing, is the Farber network, so that's putting uh, hardwired connections into the whole site and Wi-Fi networks as well. So we've got probably 150 kilometres of cable we put down temporarily and we've got 30 miles of cable under the ground as well. Uh, we provide Wi-Fi for four and a half thousand people we had on the Wi-Fi yesterday and then we also do another hundred little Wi-Fi networks around the around the show for probably 400 individual customers. So that's quite a large job. Uh, so we get involved on that on the production side probably coming in sort of January, February time. Uh, so we've got a big team out doing that. And then on the other side of the tech business, uh, on the AV and the IT rental, we're, we've probably got about four and a half thousand individual bits of kit on site. So, uh, so that's quite a large job as well. And then as we do tech content and production on the content side we're doing probably about 17 individual projects here as well. Content's an interesting one in terms of the production because obviously the revolution now really is the integration of the, the tech and the content really whereas before it was whether it was a new plasma screen or a LED screen or whatever it is and obviously we've got all that stuff. Um, it depends in terms of how long content production takes what we quite often do is is work with the agency at pitch stage so we can get in on the ideas and try and help them as much as we can um, on that side so that's where we're working the best because then we're right in at the start we can design all the tech and all the content to work together um, but then sometimes you do have things that come in at a later date so if you're just doing a interactive for a touch screen or an app or something like that so it's a, it's a little bit like the tech side it depends how early we get engaged we've been doing the network here now for I think it's either 10 or 12 years I can't remember so what we have done is we've invested quite a lot in the site so every year we look at it and say what can we put in the ground that means we don't have to do it again because the show's every two years there's only so much you can do of that because if you leave copper out in the in the air particularly if you come to Farnborough when the air show is on and in the winter we always think it's a couple of degrees colder than anywhere else in the country uh, so if we leave the copper in the ground it tends to degrade and then you're going to have problems just with that degradation so we want to rely on it because actually when the president of Boeing or whoever is here picks up the telephone which is our telephone that needs to work and when he's getting his emails his emails need to work it's it's mission critical because this is a proper business to business event so we look at it as much as we can and we have invested a lot of time and money in it we're also an investor and 
key partner in Hall 1, so we're doing that now for the next 10 years. So, so we're looking always at what can we do long term. Managing the bandwidth is quite interesting because year on year we're seeing huge increases in the amount of data that's run around the network. So last or two years ago we were looking at about a terabyte of data every day. We had some stats in yesterday that that's three terabytes of data running across the network. So we, one thing, because this is mission critical, we have backups on backups. So we have three separate one gig lines that come into the site. They're different points of presence. They're different uh, ISPs as well. So we do as much as we can to um, legislate for anything going wrong, a digger going through something off-site or... But it's, yeah, the, the increase in bandwidth is, uh, is huge. A lot of the, the technology suppliers have their niche areas and that there's no one-size-fits-all necessarily and I think a lot of them are quite willing to work with each other because they can see the benefits of each other's, of each other's products and, and that's a, a real, thing, real benefit throughout the industry. Hi, I'm Matt Blaine. I'm Managing Director of D2I Systems. Uh, we've been uh, working with Farnborough for over a decade uh, around CRM, ERP and access management systems. What the CRM, ERP and access control systems uh, do for Farnborough is allow them to, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, build the show up. So sales, marketing, finance, operations. The ERP then uh, goes into the actual operational management, CDM regulations, aircraft applications, access control for contractors, all the, the ramp up to the actual physical side. Uh, and then we go on, to the, on the site during the six weeks of build and the final show to, to put access control systems in place that then are actually making sure people are in the right place at the right time. With the time that uh, D2I have spent with Farnborough, um, we've been able to evolve the products. We, we talk about our CRM, ERP and access control, which is all linked to our core product Engage. With, with customers like uh, Farnborough, we actually start to tailor the product to their needs, uh, their specific business needs. So uh, this year in particular, we introduced uh, a really powerful dashboard that sits in the event control room, which posts the revenue gained in each gate. It's showing you the levels of throughput the types of people that are actually going through those gates, so are they your contractors, are they your emergency services, how many visitors through the, the big gate at the peak hours, um, and at a show like this you're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, so it's a real real benefit for the operations team to be able to see that and be able to visibly see what it is. It's, it's a visual thing opposed to a, a numbers, but the numbers are, are crunched through the ERP in, in the back system. If you can imagine a kind of bird's eye view of, of, of the airport, a, a map, with uh, up to kind of 10 gates, some of them being very, very controlled gates because it's the airport side where the pilots and the aircraft are, to a kind of massive B gate uh, that they call here is, is the visitor gates where you've got high numbers of people. Um, so that, that's, you've got a, a visual of, of the map, then you've got the dashboards that are kind of telling you hour by hour what the throughput are, is, hour by hour uh, the revenue, and then also um, actually telling you who's left on site so it's operationally giving you uh, an estimated ground number of, of individuals on site and that can be critical for numerous things um, not just marketing but also for the emergency services should they ever be needed. So as well as working with Farnborough D2I uh, work with Bahrain Airshow uh, very similar a slightly smaller footprint but effectively lift and shift that, that same whole operation uh, out to Bahrain. Um, we've got the benefit of actually having a, a team out in the Middle East anyway, so operationally we're, we're quite agile in being able to deliver not just in the UK for a show like this, but also uh, elements of the Bahrain Air Show. As well as air shows like Farnborough and Bahrain, we're, the product itself is scalable down to smaller events such as Geo for Diversified, where the product is the same in core essence, but actually just scales right the way down. Uh, we even have kind of small one-man bands that, that may take the product off our hands and deliver it themselves. Um, and that's, that's also a benefit of the fact that we've housed it in the cloud and, and as long as you've got a bit of internet access, then you can run it yourself as a, as a single entity. One of D2I's strengths is, is actually that we're a software company, therefore integration into other important technology features are something that, that, that D2I carry out. And on a, on a show like this and other uh, shows where it's important that we work together with other technology suppliers, uh, D2I have a, a team of people that are uh, experts in software and therefore quite keen to integrate with any great products that are out there. 
Hello, I'm Sophie Linnett and I work for Smart AV. I'm project managing Farnborough Airshow 2018. Smart AV have worked on Farnborough Airshow for well over a decade and personally this is my second year doing the airshow. Smart AV provide AV solutions for exhibitors um, in both the halls, chalets and statics for the Farnborough Airshow. Uh, we provide LED walls, 4K screens, touch screens, interactive elements um, and we're always looking to bring in more interactive technology. Direct for Farm Brayer Show, we're providing an outdoor LED wall outside Hall 1. This has been sponsored by Embraer. We have got 16 LED walls in total, a um, combination of outdoor and indoor. We've used our corner LED. We've used anything from 5.9 to 2.6. Um, We've done curved and flat LED walls as well. We've worked with the likes of both stand builders, exhibitors and end clients. Some of those including Raytheon, Saab, Coleman and Embraer. Hi, my name's James. I'm architect manager for Freeman and Mia. Freeman has worked with uh, the air show um, since it was show plans uh, back in 2014. Farm Air Show uses one of our solutions which is known as Show Hub. Um, this solution basically enables them to manage their own floor plan, um, look at their sales process and work out their net figures based on the types of stands that they've sold, um, their total net profit over the two years. Um, gives them the ability to manage their own plans uh, without the need for anybody else to step in and get involved. For rebooking purposes, the Farmer team will be using the Show Hub software. So we will have set them up with a brand new blank plan of the whole site, which includes all of the different halls, the chalets and the outdoor exhibition spaces. So they'll basically take this round on the iPads with them during the show. They'll also have it on their sales suite. Um, it allows them to meet with their clients and their exhibitors, show them where their stand is currently located, and they can click on it, they can see the size of it, um, they can put their client's information in, their, their names, uh, contact details. Um, it will show them how much that space is worth so the client knows what they've got to pay in order to secure it for next time round. Um, it's a great tool because I think it allows them to sell a lot quicker. Um, the process is not as long as taking booking forms across to a stand and trying to get the right person to have a look through, read um, the prices and what's available, what the payment terms are. This is much, a lot quicker, a lot more professional, a lot more efficient um, and I think it turns around more sales to them at the show. The rebook rate um, is about 70% uh, for the Farm Air show and then the rest of it's made up of um, a number of new businesses and emerging markets effectively so new areas like the cargo village or the aerospace 4.0 area would be classed as new business um, new emerging markets as well as well as show hub we manage a master cad plan of the entire site um, this is a more of an operational tool um, because it is there for the site to use in terms of where the site services are uh, where all the halls are plotted in location to each other where the chalet runs are um, where the outdoor exhibit areas will be on the ground and then where the aircraft will be plotted during the show. Um, things move around at the air show, the planes move around constantly during, during the week and the public weekend so we need to be on site to manage the movement of those to make sure that an aircraft can exit a certain area of the, onto the runway and then be able to get back in. It also shows us all of our site services that we have, so for other contractors on site that maybe supply internet or catering, they know where their, their points are for the services that they need. We work with a number of clients um, on new shows, um, new venues. Um, we work with them to basically maximise the space and create as much um, value to the show for them. Um, the process being that we would take a venue, um, we will work with a venue owner um, to basically have a look at um, what the regulations are for that particular show, uh, where the emergency exits are, what their requirements are for health and safety, what, their, what the height of the venue ceiling is, where the services are, uh, what physical obstructions are in the way. And we will work within those parameters to basically maximise the floor space available, giving them the best yield possible. Um, obviously, with this in mind, we also have to think about um, visitor flow, um, we make sure, want to make sure we don't leave any dead spots of the show so we don't want one area of the show to be particularly quiet while another area is just rammed full of people so um, many shows will often have uh, feature areas that we that you know will be there to attract footfall it'll be things for the client uh, visitors to get involved with um, it might be catering points things like that that aren't necessarily exhibitor related so we will work with the organizer to to position those in the best way forward so that we can attract footfall all around the hall and 
give the visitors and the clients and the exhibitors a good experience during the show. So in terms of past maximising of floor space for clients, there's not really a set amount it, uh, of how much we can increase it by. It depends how well the floor plan was drawn in the first instances. I mean, we've had, um, we've had shows that we've managed to maximise the floor space by about 20%. Um, 30 percent um, by taking in aisles gridding the floor plan because without understanding what you're doing you can end up with quite a chaotic floor plan which probably isn't the best use of space um, it really depends on the experience of the organizer some organizers have got a lot of knowledge when it comes to planning floor space um, you usually find it with a lot of the bigger venues they have more um, experience doing it some of the smaller venues um, smaller organizers maybe don't use the best use of their space and those are the ones that we probably work on most to actually optimise and be able to get them a bit more space out of what they've got available to them. We're operating the air show here on a pre-war airfield um, which obviously isn't designed as a permanent event venue so we have various locations. We are restricted with space and we do need to get people into the event as efficiently as we can do. Um, and two years ago there were a few hold-ups at the, the 2016 on some of the gates so that whole process of how we get those individuals into the show we've completely reviewed from, from start to finish and that starts from their journey wherever they're parking or getting off the train with the whole wayfinding of how they then get to the gates and the bus journeys and then all the way through the security process so we've, we've remapped and remodeled all of that with a number of consultants and professional agencies um, and the focus all of all of that is the customer experience and the visitor journey of, of how do we get those people in as fast as we can but also as securely and safely as we can all combined together.